So Zach, we've been here at Boardman Performance Centre today. Uh, we've just concluded uh, this really interesting test you've done. Uh, yeah. Just quickly summarise a, what we did and what your initial findings are. So what we're doing today was uh, testing one of the most aero bikes that you see out there, which is a Cervelo P5, um, consistently tests very well in the, in the test that we do against two really old bikes, 20 years old. So we had a Zip 3001, uh, which is a, a beam bike, which means it has no seat tube and no seat stays. Uh, we tested also a Lotus 110, which is a fantastic bike, which has no down tube at all, and it also has no seat stays. Um, and what we're trying to do is to um, basically evaluate the aerodynamic performance of those three bikes um, trying to mimic the position uh, and the setup identically so that we're not, you know, things, everything's all set, uh, set the same um, and we can make sure that it's a true test. Yeah. Do you have any expectations beforehand, before we come and talk about the results, what were your thoughts of, you know, would, would those, what were at the, the time very um, futuristic bikes, would they be able to live up to modern technology or do you think things have moved on? Well, from some of the work that, that we've done, we know that playing with frame design outside of the UCI regulations, which is what the Cervelo P5 is constrained by, does have the potential to throw up some really interesting and fast shapes. Um, now, back when these bikes were made, back in the 90s, the, UCI's had, the UCI hadn't changed their rules. That came in about 1998. So uh, people were doing lots of weird and crazy things. I was hoping that the frame designs were gonna be, you know, that they were gonna perform really well. Um, I mean, the Zip in particular is my old bike, so I was hoping that that was gonna do really well. Um, I used to race on that 10 years ago. So, uh, so yeah, I was, I was hoping to see that they got close, for sure. And uh, big question, who came out the winner and how close was it? Well, the winner of the test was the Cervelo P5. So the Cervelo P5 was consistently fast across all of the yaw angles. And a yaw angle is the angle of attack of the wind on the rider. And it's important that you test at different yaw angles to simulate what would happen in crosswinds outside. Uh, the P5 beat all of the bikes, uh, the other two bikes, uh, at all the yaw angles. But the Zip and the Lotus were very, very close. They were only within a few watts or so, um, up to around sort of seven, seven and a half degrees of yaw. Uh, which is similar, you know, similar to what you get outside. Zero to seven and a half is quite a typical, typical wind angle range on a, on a rider. Um, so I was really, yeah, really pleased to see that these old bikes, that even though they're 20 years old, can still very much hold their own with a, with a, a super, super bike like the Cervelo P5. Yeah, so not quite as quick, but not a lot slower, I suppose, is the summary really. Absolutely, you might think, you know, all oh, these bikes, the, the technology's outdated, but to only be within a few watts of a, of a, of a really updated bike is, is, I think, incredibly interesting. And one of the reasons why we wanted to do this test is to, to see the difference and yeah. see how much there was.